This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Dr. Phil here. Come February 27th, you're going to be able to pick up a book called We've Got Issues. And you know we do. This is a book that says it's going to teach you how to stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And in this book, I set forth 10 principles for saving this society from going off the deep end. 10 principles for protecting your family, 10 principles for giving you what you need to flourish and have the life that you want for yourself and for your children and for your grandchildren. We've taken some wrong turns. We've been letting the loudest voices dictate some of the thinking that has taken us way off course. Well, I'm speaking up and bringing us back to the center of the road. I hope you'll pick this book up and I hope you'll read it with a real open mind because I'm pushing back against a lot of what you've been hearing. Somebody had to do it. Might as well be me. February 27th, we've got issues. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. I have a girlfriend that I love and I have my wife that I love. Caught in a twisted triangle. Do you feel guilt for cheating on your wife? I don't consider it cheating. For the first time, the two women meet. Aren't you sitting around saying, how did I find two such gullible women? This isn't a game to me. It is a game to you. Don't give me that self-righteous crap. Who does he get understanding from? He comes to me. You keep kicking him out. That's stupid. Here you go. All yours. Which one should he choose? This may be a first. He wants me to decide. I don't know what you think is so funny. They're laughing because your narcissistic, self-serving bull is more than they can take. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Okay, now I want you to imagine that you're driving down the road of life with the man you love, but all of a sudden he surprises you with undisclosed incarceration history, stealing $1,400 from an employer, or having a pattern of psychiatric holes for wild and unstable behavior. Would you just keep on driving? Or would you take one of those exit ramps that you've just been blowing by? Okay, we'll come back to this road later on. But first, Melvin and Rachel have been married for eight years, but it has not been all love and romance. In fact, during four of those eight years, Melvin and Rachel were separated. For the past two years, Melvin has had this girlfriend, Chantel. Now, currently, Melvin is living with Chantel, but he also spends quality time with his wife, okay? Now, he's torn between these two women. I love her, I really do, she's my wife, I, I married her. But I also love my girlfriend, Chantel. Just so you know, Chantel and Rachel, they don't love each other. Okay, and this may be a first. Melvin says he wants me to decide who he should choose. <laughs> his girlfriend or his wife. So what does the woman who wears the wedding ring, I mean, what does she feel about all of this? Well, Melvin may be living with Chantel, but his wife Rachel says despite her husband's cheating, lying, and there is drug abuse, she loves him, and she says, I want him back. Take a look. 
my marriage with Melvin has been very rocky. Two years ago, I found out that Melvin had a girlfriend. At the time, we were taking a break and Melvin was living elsewhere, and I found out that she'd been living with him for six months. I was very shocked. For the last two years, I've been Melvin's wife, and he's had a girlfriend, and he's been playing both of us. I've been physically sick over this. I've cried so many tears. Even though Melvin has been living with Chantel, he still comes and spends time with me, telling me that he loves me. We still have a sexual relationship. One of the reasons we got married so quickly is because we were abstaining from sex until our wedding day. Now, Melvin has been having sex with Chantel. That made me so upset. She's a dirty slut. I'm disgusted with Chantel that she knowingly had this relationship with my husband. I still love Melvin, but Melvin needs to make a decision if he's going to commit and be faithful to me or if he's going to stay with Chantel so I can get on with my life and stop this vicious cycle. Okay, so the big question that you want is you want me to get him to tell you what his decision is. Yes. That way you can get on with your life. If it were that simple, yes. Because Melvin has made a decision several different times, but mm -hmm. he'll always go back to Chantel. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's sick. Now, you met him on an online website, right? Yes. Christian website. Yes. <laughs> and you knew him for how long before you got married? About six or seven weeks. Six or seven weeks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so after six or seven weeks, what you knew is that he had a computer. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much all you knew. Who asked who to marry who? I asked Melvin to marry me. You did? Yes. Why? Because I loved him. Here's my question before we meet him. Why is it his decision whether you get on with your life or stay with him? Why, why is that his decision? You, you say you're sitting here waiting for him to decide which of you to pick? I am here because I need help to be strong enough to learn to be happy by myself. And I mean, if that's the decision that's made here today, I need to know. Okay, so you just lapsed into the intransitive statement. Mm -hmm. If that's the decision that's made here today, that decision has to be yours. He, he can't make it. I can't make it. You, you, he's asking me who to pick. I haven't met her yet. I guess I'll... <laughs> what, I'm size you guys up or something? And I, 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 odd question. Melvin says he really loves his wife and needs my help to sort out this love triangle that he's found himself in. Take a look. Let's, let's hear from old Melvin. Right now, I'm in a position where I have a girlfriend that I love and I have my wife that I love. I don't know what to do. I'm in the midst of a love triangle. When I'm with the person that I'm married to, I'm faithful, I'm loyal, I'm committed, I'm passionate. Rachel and I have had a rocky marriage. I believe that Rachel is responsible for me being with Chantel today. I never would have went to Chantel if I didn't get kicked out. Don't you love me? Yes, I do love you. I'm not getting a divorce because I love my wife and I want to be with her. Well, I believe in my vows that I said to Rachel when I said, till death do us part. At the same time, there are ways that Chantel understands me that Rachel does not. She's there for me, she loves me. I love you. She's very supportive of me. Rachel is supportive of me, but she doesn't show it. I'm very affectionate to my wife when we're alone. Also, when I'm with Chantel, I'm very affectionate. One more. <laughs> I'm having sexual relationships with both women. Rachel confronted me and asked me if I was having an affair. I told Rachel no because I didn't believe that I was having an affair because she kicked me out. Chantel is a person that I truly, genuinely love because she's been there for me the last two years, but I know that eventually it's gonna have to end because I'm not married to Chantel, I'm married to my wife. But if my wife doesn't want to continue our relationship, I want her to tell me. I'm gonna take to heart what Dr. Phil tells me. That's why I'm here to get some answers. This can't go on. Okay, good to meet you. Yes. So you're torn. Yes, Dr. Phil. You're, you're really torn because do, do you love your wife? I love her deeply. Uh-huh. And, but you love Chantel? Yes. Do you love her deeply too? Yes, I love Chantel also. 
and you want my opinion, right? Yes, I do. And, and I'm going to give it to you. You may like it. You may not. Do you feel any guilt at all for cheating on your wife? Well, I don't consider it cheating. Are you having sex with Chantel? Yes, I am. Are you having sex with your wife? Yes. So you're cheating on both of them. <laughs> right? No, I'm not. Okay, so monogamy is just not in the cards for you. Yes, it is. They're, they're laughing because I'm just an old country boy and I, I don't understand how you can embrace monogamy and two women <laughs> at the same time and be married to one of them but not the other. Well, Dr. Phil, I guess I'm not. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because I was really confused. <laughs> I, I was going to go Google monogamy and see... <laughs> He gave me an STD. He gave me another STD. He made a sex tape with a girlfriend and it got sent to That's your minor lie. son. That's a lie. And later. This isn't a game to me. She, it is a game to you. No, it's not. Don't give me that self-righteous crap. You are married to her and she knows about her. You're with her and she knows about her and you got your cake and eat it too. So you're ping-ponging back and forth between the two of them. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. On Oops! The Podcast, join me, comedian Julio Gallarotti, as I examine everyday life, the mistakes, the bad decisions, the goals, the jokes, the social engagements, and all things in between. I'm joined every week by producer and personal confidant, Ryan Lynch, various other comedians for witty, candid, and intoxicating conversation. Our listeners love Oops! for sophisticated banter, aka your mom could listen, and many feel like they're in the room with us chopping it up with old pals. You can find every episode of the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Do you know what bait and switch is? No. Bait and switch is something where you tell somebody you're going to give them one thing and then they get something else. And she said that you were charming and funny and Christian and shared values and all of that sort of stuff. But then when she got you home and got you unwrapped, that that wasn't really what was there. Is that true? No, that's not true. So you weren't different than you presented her? No, we met each other on an online Christian dating site and she got what she got. When... <laughs> she said on the honeymoon that you got drunk, acted possessed, you were naked, standing on the balcony, talking to yourself and hissing like a snake with your, with your eyes rolled back in your head. Do you recall that? Yes, I do recall that. So that was a new revelation. Well, Dr. Phil, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Right. And I think that played a big part in me acting like that. Did you share? Along with the alcohol. Did you share that diagnosis with her before you got no, married? No, I didn't share it with her because I was new to the diagnosis and I was still dealing with it myself. So I was unfamiliar to that diagnosis. So you met her on a dating website and you're chatting her up and y'all are going and having coffee and dinner and all this kind of stuff. 
and you've been diagnosed with schizophrenia and you just thought, well, I'm kind of new to this, so I'm not going to bring that up. <laughs> do, do, I mean, because I'm just wondering if you consider that to be honest. I'm trying to figure out if you're being straight with me or if you're lying to yourself. I, I want to tell you what she perceives about you, okay? Sure. And you, you can tell me whether you, you think this is right or not. She says she's just going along and finds out that you didn't disclose an incarceration history. Okay, and then she's just kind of driving along and she comes up and says, wow, he was caught stealing $1,400 on video and lied about it and then played kind of the um, unstable card and wound up in a psych ward instead of jail. And then she could have taken that exit ramp, but she doesn't. And then she finds out, well, he didn't disclose his schizophrenia diagnosis. Then she's driving along. She just keeps going and goes, wow, he, he's had multiple psychiatric holds for instability. You said you've taken him to the emergency room, right? Yes. And they hold him for 72 hours. She doesn't take that exit ramp. She goes along. He would overdose on his meds and be zombie-like, just sitting around. You know, well, okay, she just keeps on. Skips that exit ramp. Then he was arrested for shoplifting. She doesn't take that exit ramp. Then uh, the 12-year-old daughter. Your 12-year-old your daughter is in her room crying during the whole wedding out of the mouths of babes. But you ignore that. You don't take that exit ramp. You, you say, I kicked him out. So you did see something, but then you let him back in. You keep driving along. He stole your roommate's information and obtained an illegal credit card. Right? But you didn't take that exit ramp, so you just keep driving along. He stole your neighbor's credit card and dead husband's Whatever. vital information. Whatever. And you just keep driving along. I'm getting out of here. Uh, he was dealing hydrocodone in Florida. You say he's getting it from a pain clinic and selling it on the street, but doesn't bother you. You just keep driving along. He had an affair with a younger girl. You just keep driving along. He gave me an STD. You just keep driving along. He gave me another STD. You just keep driving along. He made a sex tape with a girlfriend and it got sent to That's your minor lie. son. That's a lie. Okay, and you just keep driving along. He threw a soda can at your head. That's a lie. You keep driving along. He kicked my car door in anger. You keep driving along. He scratched my car with a fork and threatened to kill me. I mean, this is a long trip. It just keeps going <laughs> on. You think everything there was true, correct? Yes. You thought they were true, right? Yes. And you didn't take a single exit ramp. You just kept on going down the road. And that is very significant to me. Yes. Even if you're wrong, he's getting ready to say, not true, I didn't throw a soda can, or whatever. But that doesn't matter. The significance to me is that you believed it was true and you kept going anyway. What'd you steal? My neighbor's ring. Okay, and you stole that ring to impress him. Yes. No, she didn't. She said she stole the ring because she wanted you to know she could be a bad girl too. You could take the ring, but you couldn't take the guilt, so you went and told her, I, I did this and I'm sorry. Yes. And she said, okay, give me the ring back and we'll just forget the whole thing. She turned me in and I was arrested for it. <clears throat> okay. Now, <clears throat> unless I misunderstood this, I understood you to tell us that you, you told Melvin that if you give the ring back, that she wouldn't prosecute you. And he said, no. Yes. I wanted to be able to get the ring out and put it back before she found out, and he wouldn't agree to that. He said, no, we're keeping it. And she went to jail for 12 days. I, I was unaware of that. I didn't even know she was in jail at the time. Really? Yes. Because I got to tell you, my wife doesn't show up for... No, no, no. <laughs> this was during the time we went together. About four or five days, I'm going to start looking around. We were like, together what? during this time. Okay, y'all were separated? We were separated. You were with Chantel? Yes. Y'all are wondering if I can help you, right? Yes. I can, I can help you. I, I, can, I can help you, seriously. I, I can help you. you you've, you've lost your mind. You, <laughs> you, you've, you, you've lost focus about what, what makes sense. I'm going to...
we're going to get our feet back on the ground. But when I say we, uh, we might as well be all of us. Uh, <laughs> next, Melvin's wife and girlfriend have never met. But they are going to meet because Chantel is here, and we're going to talk to her next. We'll be right back. I've told Melvin that he needs to suck it up and be a man and get a divorce. Rachel has asked me if I've ever slept with Melvin. I've told her the truth. And later... I'm going to leave. People laugh because... No, wait. No, if you're leaving, you need to go this way. I've never met Chantel face to face. I'm very ready to confront Chantel because I can't take it anymore and this has to stop today. Get over here. Chantel needs to leave Melvin alone. She needs to understand that we are married and she knew that going into the relationship with Melvin. Well, I'm talking to Melvin who has an unusual request. He wants me to help him choose between his wife of eight years, Rachel, or his girlfriend of two years, Chantel. Now, he says he's in a serious dilemma. He admittedly ping-pongs between each woman and does not know who he should be with as he loves them both. His wife, Rachel, wants him to choose before the show is over. But first, let's hear from Melvin's younger girlfriend, Chantel. She says... She is the best person for him, not his wife, but her. Melvin is my boyfriend. We've been boyfriend and girlfriend for two years. I knew that he was married when I met him. I've been sleeping with the married man. When Melvin and I first were involved intimately, he was already away from his wife. I was developing feelings and we kissed. And in that kiss, I knew that I was in love. I've told Melvin that he needs to suck it up and be a man and get a divorce. He said you were gonna get I a divorce, know. and then you said you were gonna marry me. I don't remember that. Rachel has emailed me saying ugly things like, bitch, who wants you? You're fat and ugly. He loves me. That pisses me off. I most definitely believe that if Rachel loved Melvin the way she needs to love Melvin, there would be no reason for Melvin to look for me. Rachel has asked me if I've ever slept with Melvin. I told her the truth. We did have sex. I know that he loves me. I know that he loves his wife, but I just don't know if he knows how to make a decision for himself. Chantel, come on out. Hi, babe. Hi, Dr. Phil. Good to meet you. How Good are you? Good to meet you. Let's see. Can I put you there? And I'll put you Don't forget right... the audience isn't here. I'll put you right here. And you just decide where you want to sit. <laughs> okay. You chose to sit over on this side with your wife, but you traveled here with Chantel, correct? Yes. Why did you choose this side instead of over here with Chantel? Because Dr. Phil, she's my wife. And I love her. Uh -huh. And I wanted to work. Yeah. How do you feel about this one? Same thing. I love Chantel. You've been with him for two years, and he's married. He's mar when I first met him, he was separated. He had his own condo. Kind of one bald guy to another. <laughs> Aren't you just kind of sitting around saying, how did I find two such gullible women? No. That's not what I'm saying. This isn't a game to me. She, it is a game to you. No, it's not. Don't give me that self-righteous crap. You are married to her and she knows about her. You're with her and she knows about her. And you got your cake and eat it too. So you're ping-ponging back and forth between the two of them. When I was out with Chantel, I was separated from my wife and we were contemplating divorce. I did not just walk into another relationship knowing that I was gonna fall in love with somebody else. Did you give your wife two STDs? No, I didn't. 
my wife was unfaithful to me. She could have contracted that from the person she was with. He says that he's not ping-ponging back and forth and not playing you both. What do you think about her being involved in your marriage? It's disgusting to me. I don't see how someone could do that. If she knows we were trying to work things out, she should be a woman and back away. But she's constantly calling, crying, just nonstop text messages whenever we're together. And I just think that's very selfish. <laughs> Honest to God, I, I, I think I'm being punked. <laughs> You're a podcast listener, and this is a podcast ad. Reach great listeners like yourself with podcast advertising from Lips and Ads. Choose from hundreds of top podcasts offering host endorsements, or run a reproduced ad like this one across thousands of shows to reach your target audience with Lips and Ads. Go to lipsandads.com now. That's L I B S Y N ads.com. Y'all are currently living together. Yes. And, and you traveled here together. Yes. Yes. But you're sitting over here with your wife because you say you want to be with her. I'm committed to my marriage, even though it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. It might not look like it. But when I said my vows to my wife, I meant my vows till death do us part. I don't know what you think is so funny. <laughs> you know, People, I'm gonna leave. People laugh because. No, wait. No, if you're leaving, you need to go this way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honest to God, I, I, I think I'm being punked. He was saying, I don't know what you all think is so funny. Do you know why they're laughing? Yes, I do. Why are they laughing? Because this is a ridiculous situation. It is ridiculous laughter. <laughs> they're laughing because they don't want to stand up on national television and say, holy <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> That's why they're laughing. I understand. But we need to, and th these guys will come back. They, they, they make a laugh. Oh, here we, here we go. Um, but it's the, why are you back? Why did you Dr. Phil, I need your help. I, I wish the audience would stop laughing. This is serious. This is my life that we're talking about. I'm not playing a game. I'm not making up jokes. I don't know what's so funny, but this is my life that we're talking about. I came here today to, be, to get real answers and to find out some help from Dr. Phil. That's the only reason I'm here today. Well, since you're talking to them, I'll speak for them. May I speak for y'all? Yes. They're laughing because it's ridiculous. Yes. They're laughing. They're laughing because your absolute and utter lack of insight and narcissistic, self-serving is more than they can take. That's why they're laughing. And that should be a huge wake-up call to you. You it should is. thank them. It is, You Dr. should Phil. thank them for pointing out the ridiculousness of the rationale that you call a marriage. How am I doing? Okay. Oh, I just wanted to be sure I wasn't misquoting you. Um, they're not making... They're not making light of this because it's funny. They're making light of it because it's ridiculously sad and they cannot understand why you are sitting around waiting for him to decide what happens with your life. <laughs> why are you back? Do you want me to leave? You're, no, I'd like for you to stay. Okay. All yours. 
the end of this show, she just made her decision. Here's what Rachel has a problem with you about. Sure. Um, she says that you're just using her husband, Melvin, to pay your rent and bills. Wow. She's saying that you cheated on Melvin and you gave him STD, which is true, right? I wasn't considered cheating. She said that you sent her teenage son a video of you having sex with Melvin. It's not true. Why would you make the video and... It wasn't... B, why would you send it to anybody for it, any reason? It wasn't... I made it for myself. It was just audio, and it had music in the background, so I thought it would be like art. Excuse me. <laughs> but I sent it to Rachel to make her see that what I was saying it was true. <laughs> You're here because you keep kicking your husband out because you can't keep him. You keep kicking him out. That's stupid. Here you go, all yours. <laughs> That's the end of this show. She just made her decision. She actually has a list of her complaints about you. And I'll tell you what I think about that. You just don't get to have a list. You're right. I, maybe I don't, don't get to get have a, a list. I don't. Maybe I don't. But when it's all said and done, and he feels like because of her, where does he come to? He comes to me. Who does he get companionship from? He comes to me. Who does he get understanding from? He comes to me. Who does he get love from? He comes to me. I've never done anything to hurt him, to set him up, to, to show hatred towards his kids, towards, towards him, anything like that. I've always shown him complete love, compassion, and genuine because that's who I am for him. If, he, if I knew that she loved him, and if I knew that, that if I let him go with complete understanding and maturity, and he would be safe and not heartbroken with her or anything like that, I would let him go, fine. You know, but I've let him go four or five times, and she's completely destroyed his heart over and over and over. And it hurts me because I love him. It hurts me to see his, determinate, his determined face when he's leaving me and his heartbroken face when he comes back to me. You are beyond delusional. Am I? Is that what you think? Why? Why do you think I'm delusional? Because you just simply don't get the fact that they're that married. You are an interloper here. You are involved with a married man. You are sitting here criticizing his wife. You have absolutely no standing, no basis. Don't get a vote whatsoever. I know it I don't get a vote. It is absurd for you to criticize this woman in her relationship with this man. That you could fill this room with what you don't know about what goes on between a husband and a wife. Right. You're playing house. You're playing footsie. You have no basis for any criticism of this woman whatsoever, and you're too ignorant to know that. <laughs> Melvin wants me to make a decision, and I will, right after the break. I have contemplated divorce from Melvin. Every time I thought I was going to do it, Melvin would come along and say the right things and do the right things, and I had hope again. I think the marriage can be saved only if Chantel's out of the picture. If my wife presents me with divorce papers, I will sign them. Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? Join me and visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together, we are Feeding America. You asked me a question coming in, what, what should you do? Yes, sir. Um, you know, first off, 
this relationship, if, if that's what you call it, between the two of you is unhealthy, it's sick, it's improper, and it's doomed to failure. There is no future in a relationship between the two of you. You're incredibly toxic for each other. You should not be together another minute of another hour of another day. That's what I think about this relationship here. Um, you have serious issues with self-worth and self-esteem. The fact that you are willing to allow yourself to be pulled in to this kind of melodrama and infidelity and lies and all, all of this sickness going back and forth is all about you. It's not about him. The fact that you say you want him to make a decision about your life so you can move on with it tells me everything that I need to know about you. It tells me that you need to not be in this relationship with him. You need to not be in a relationship with anyone right now. <laughs> what you need to do is focus on you. You've got to clean your own house before you can clean anybody else's. And you've let someone into your life that doesn't have a moral compass here. Now he has a diagnosis that somebody assigned him of being schizophrenic. Maybe he is, I don't know. That aside, th this relationship you're in is toxic for you, it is abusive, it is hurtful to you, and you need to make the decision to get out of this relationship. You need to get a divorce before dark today. You need to tell him if he wants to be in your life, he needs to get himself together first and you need to get yourself together first. There is no theory under which you two should be together. No theory. And there is no theory under which I'm going to send you to marriage counseling because there's no theory under which there should be a marriage here. Okay? You need individual help, and I will get you individual help. Our Twitter wall has just been on fire with comments, uh, especially from women who have either been cheated on or have been in a relationship with a married man. Becca213 says, hey, girlfriend, if he cheats on his wife, he'll eventually cheat on you. Stay on your toes. Uh, at Jeanette Fuller says, this wife is suffering from shell shock and battle fatigue. She needs to get out of this mess. Uh, MS Amy 1974 says, marriage is not meant to be selfish. Selfish choices destroy marriages every day and stupidity allows damage to continue. So that's what we're hearing from our viewers. So my final comments to Melvin after the break. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Okay, Melvin, um, is there any specific question or comment you have about anything I've said so far? I've said you absolutely do not need to be with her, and I've told her she absolutely should not be with you. You know what? I came here today for answers, and I think I got the answer that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, let me answer a question you didn't ask, okay? Sure. Um, the question you didn't ask is, Dr. Phil, what the hell's wrong with me that I am creating all of this drama in my life and can't sustain a, a, a course of action here. 
I'm glad you ask. <laughs> you are having a lot of problem, in my view, with impulse control. I think you're having a lot of problem with emotional maturity. And I think that you have some very powerful needs that you're, you're trying to meet, but I think you're going about it in all the wrong way. I, I see in you a, a, a very narcissistic view in the sense that you see things only from your point of view. You don't have empathy for her or for her. And as a result, you're derailing lives of the people that you're interacting with, not the least of which is yours. You aren't ready to be in a relationship at this point. Now, I have no doubt that you can be. I mean, you can get on dating sites and you can meet people and, you know, you're not a bad looking guy and, you know, you're in pretty good shape and, you know, I think you've probably got a pretty good gift of gab and a pretty good sense of humor and can probably be pretty charming over dinner. Uh, but there's more to it than that. And you want more than that, right? Yes. So what you have to start asking yourself is what in the world is wrong with me that my moral compass is spinning instead of pointing towards true north? Now, I don't know what your involvement is with drugs right now. Are you doing drugs right now? Yes, I am. This erratic behavior you're showing could be totally a function of, of drug addiction and the roller coaster mm -hmm. that you come from that. Uh, that could explain why you're standing on the balcony talking to yourself and hissing like a snake. I, I don't know. Your issues need to be resolved before you make any decisions in your life about anything whatsoever. Okay. And I think that you need serious help. And I'm willing to offer that to you if you want that. I'm willing to offer you that help, but I'm gonna tell you that that help is not going to be something that you can get up and jump back and okay. forth on. That help, help is not something you can start and stop, and that help is gonna be inpatient, not outpatient. Okay. okay? Because the fact that you're experiencing this, and I think you are exploiting this, is tragic and I, I, I want to get you some help. Yes. And I'll tell you what I'm going to offer to do for you. I'm going to offer to fly you from here direct to a dual diagnosis treatment center called Origins Recovery Center on South Padre Island in Texas. This is a center that will deal with your drugs and mental and emotional issues simultaneously. And, and let me tell you something. I don't know how long you'll be gone. It could be a month, it could be a year. You may never go back to where you're living now because of triggers and problems yes. of that. I don't know. But I'm gonna give you a chance to get some traction in your life if you will take it. Yeah. Will you take that help? Yes, I will. That is, uh, thank you. That is, um, that, that is our gift to you. We will take care of getting you there, and I'll, get, I'll guarantee you when you're there, you're going to be on lockdown. You may never talk to her again. I don't know. You may never speak with her. I don't know. All I'm saying right now is you got to say, i got to save myself. Yes. Will you take that help? Yes. Okay. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. And, and, and while he's gone, you need to take care of you, and I'm going to get you the help to do that. Thank you. All right, and, yes. you're, and you're gonna you're gonna do that, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you, you, you got very people much. in your life that love you. You need to listen to them. Yes. Okay, thank all right, you. thank you, Melvin. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, thanks everybody.